Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wi-Fi. So we're still on the topic of Electric Earth because we're yet to talk about the source. And it's a topic that's been uh, really hard for me to cover due to the subject matter. When I first started looking into electrical phenomenon and magnetic phenomenon, I never expected it to lead to this conclusion that I'm going to talk about. So just bear in mind that these are just my ideas, my opinions, my thoughts. When we look into the history of electricity, we find that there's two sides to the story. And as a matter of fact, we find this story throughout science in practically all areas where there are two people involved in a theory and usually one person has a static idea and the other person has a dynamic idea. For example, DC and AC, where DC is like a static version of electricity and AC is like the dynamic version of electricity, where things are constantly changing and in DC things are static, they're not always changing. And so you have this throughout all physics, basically. You know, we have objects that are moving in a straight line, and then we have objects that are spinning. And these two mechanics behave fundamentally different when it comes to observation and the way the forces are, are observed. And from what I noticed, it seems that the scientific community seems to accept the theories that are static in nature. And they seem to reject the dynamic ones unless they absolutely have to. You know, where there's just overwhelming evidence that the dynamic physics makes more sense than the static one. And it would almost appear that they go through an extreme effort to bury the information or discredit the one that comes up with the uh, dynamic theory. Like for example, Nikola Tesla, he came up with the alternating current and Thomas Edison came up with the direct current. And they tried very hard to get rid of Tesla's ideas because it was dynamic in nature. You see? So I don't want to dive too deep into the history of things, but I just want to mention that back in the day when General Electric was producing electric motors for the first time, there was a problem with them where that when you threw the switch to turn them off, sometimes they would just explode in your face. And part of that was because of how much energy was coming back through the lines when you would throw the switch. Well, they had hired a person called Charles Proteus Steinmetz, who was a brilliant man, because he actually uh, was able to solve the problem. He was well known within the scientific community, but not really well known within the public community. I think part of that has to do with what he knew about the nature of electricity and magnetism. Well, fundamentally, they're the same thing. Anyway, if you want to know everything there is to know about electricity and magnetism, I highly recommend that you look into Charles Proteus Steinmetz's work, because he wrote basically all the fundamental books on electricity and magnetism. And you also look into the works of Oliver Heaviside, because he's basically, he's basically like the mastermind behind electricity and magnetism. He took Maxwell's complicated calculus equations and turned them into simple algebra. The, the simple algebra that we know today that are called Maxwell's equations are actually not Maxwell's equations. They are Oliver Heaviside's equations. But because of Oliver Heaviside's nature, the scientific community didn't like him because he was basically calling them out on all their BS. Anyhow, one of the most fundamental things that these guys came up with when it came to the laws of electricity is that whenever you have a surface that is charged electrically and there is an electric field present, then this field must terminate on another conductive surface. It is fundamentally impossible to have an electric field with one conductive surface, right? Because you need the field to go from point A to point B in order for there to be a field. And one of the biggest problems I had with the whole electric earth theory was, yeah, we have the earth and it's a conductive surface and we have an electric field here present, which is uh, evident, but I could never find the opposite conducting surface of what was creating the field. Like, you know, point A to point B. I mean, there's no question in my mind anyway that the Earth was formed by an electric discharge, massive electric discharge. I mean, everything is there for it. But I just couldn't quite pinpoint the source. Like, I mean, I thought about the sun, I thought about the moon, I thought about some other object in space because I was like, you know, well, something has to generate this field. And not only that, but something has to have triggered it to you know, be set off. Like, the electric field doesn't just discharge for no reason. Unless it either capacitates, overcapacitates its conductive surfaces, then it discharges. You know, but it doesn't just happen for no reason, right? And so something, something is generating a charge, something is generating this electric field. And we also know that the electric field of the Earth is in a direction from the surface upward, or from the surface away, perpendicular in most cases. We know things like if you attach a wire to the ground and raise it really high into the air, the higher you go, the greater the potential will be on that wire. And so great, so we can establish that there is this electric field on Earth. Awesome. So we have one surface, the Earth, which is considered to be one of the most conductive materials, is ground. And so in order to create this potential difference here, this electric field, we need a second conducting surface that's basically equal in size and conductivity 
activity. And so naturally I began looking. I mean, do you know that feeling you get when you've been staring at a picture for hours and hours and hours, and then all of a sudden you realize that it wasn't actually the picture you were looking at, and there was an entirely new picture there. Something you didn't expect, and it was profound and moving. You know that feeling? That feeling of realization that what you once thought was real turned out not to be? It's almost like those illusionary pictures where you finally see both sides of the illusion. It's like that moment when you find out that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and all these made-up fairy tales aren't real. Well, when I looked into the sky one night, I had to ask myself the question, what am I seeing? What is this, really? Leave a comment down in the comment section below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I just want to apologize for taking so long to make this video. I hope you enjoyed, leave a like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye